Extinguisher. So, who can tell me, in the home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chusaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry. But I can handle circuitry. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, Fire. I won't do it for you. Blah. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again! I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Where are you? And that's how a Pacamat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop, Fire! I'm not joking this time! Please believe me, it's there! Hmm. Nice try, Fire. Oh, look! He even used smoke this time! No, Simka. That smoke's from a fire! Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth! I swear I'm not lying! This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here! Tula! Simka! <laughs> Turn off the soldering iron! Uh-huh. Got it! Be careful, kids. You have to stay back here, away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher! <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin, and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right. Where's the fire? Ah. Oh. Hooray! Hooray! We, we put, put out, out the fire. fire. You fixies are just the greatest. Thank you. You saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> Not at all, colleague. If not for you, Fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. 
Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs> Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The tools. Hang on, there are these really cool things that I want to show you. Ah. Whoa! Whoa, whoa. <laughs> look how many things you got all at once! <laughs> Your dad's gonna be so angry when he sees what you did with all of his tools. I'm gonna put them all right back where they were. And where were they? Open the box and you'll see. It's neat. There's a special place in there for each one of the tools. <laughs> Try hammering in a nail or drilling a hole with your bare hand. Uh-huh. There's no way. But with the help of the proper tools, it's a piece of cake. But of course, that's only if you know how to use them. Tools need proper care. If the head of a hammer is loose or a drill is dull, then you shouldn't work with them. It's dangerous. And when you're done working, put the tools back in their places. Or you'll be tearing your house apart trying to find them the next time you need them. Huh. The pincers go here, and the wrench goes over there. This drill bit's too long for this spot. Let's see if it fits in this one. Huh. Any idea what this tool is for? For splitting wood or carving stone that chisels what you want to own. <laughs> wow, Simka, you're a real poet. Now try to answer this little poem. When you have a thing to measure, this round tool is quite a treasure. This tool, right? I know what it's called. It's a measuring tape. Let me measure you, Nolik. Wow, you've grown. You've almost reached one centimeter. Class! I also have a rhyming riddle for you. What bangs a nail into the wall to make sure pictures never fall? A, a hammer. hammer! I was first, and the hammer goes right here. And now I have one for you to guess. If you need to screw in screws, here's the tool that you should use. A screwdriver! I was first, again. You got it right. All right, Tom Thomas, we better hurry. We still have a lot of tools here to get sorted out. Humans, just like fixies, use hundreds of different tools to do their work. Picking the right one depends on the task at hand. For instance, if you need to hammer in a nail, use a hammer. But you don't use a hammer for a screw. For that, there is a special tool called a screwdriver. A wrench is the tool for tightening nuts and bolts. A vise is used to hold a part in place. And a drill to drill a hole. If you need to cut a piece of wood, you should choose a saw. You could use a handsaw, for example, or a hacksaw. Different kinds of pliers can be used for snipping, gripping, or bending. If you need to smooth something down, you use a file. If you learn how to work with tools properly, you can build just about anything. <sighs> Looks like we did it, just in time. Oh, and how about this? Do you know what kind of tool that is? I don't know. There's no place for it in here. Just throw it out. Come on, and what if my parents use it? Looks like we did something wrong here. <gasps> my dad came home. Tom Thomas! I'm in here. Hi there. Reading. Way to go, son. Huh? Oh, oh. I don't get it. Where is it? What? I put a piece of metal under the table leg so it wouldn't shake, but it disappeared. So that's where the tools place is. <laughs> did you take it? What? I didn't. It must be somewhere under the table. <sighs> And you look under the sofa. Uh, all right. What do you think he wants?
Lots. He wants us to get that metal thing out of his dad's box. Come on, let's go. You got it. Any luck? Uh-uh. Ah, uh, me neither. I found it, Dad. It was under the table, just like I told you. Huh, you were right. It's strange, how could I have missed it? Maybe you're just, uh, tired from working too much. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Tadish. <clears throat> what? Uh, it's a new word, Tadish. Tadish? Hmm. I do like the sound of it. Can you believe that pixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The cell phone. Hmm. Hey, Nolik. Come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a pac mat and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Mossy and Papus come home from their boo 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 boozness. What did you say? Business. A work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. <laughs> Do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below, and each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit in here forever now? You? Our parents are missing! The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. Uh, uh, not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give him a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call him, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not going to talk to them. We're just going to listen. We need to close the contacts. It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Masia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Masia, where are you? In the telephone. The phone part is not what she's asking you. <laughs> oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad! Dad, did you go anywhere today? 
where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Come and check out our fixie ringtone. Telephone is... It's just incredible. You see? I found it. Son, you're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. My children! Oh, my Marcia! Papus! Oh, my sweeties! <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry, there's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. concert starts in 30 minutes, and I don't want to iron your pants again. All right, Mom. Just one more time, huh? No, I'm sorry. Mom said I have to quit kicking the ball. But Mom said nothing about dribbling the ball. Go, you can Tom, do it. Tom. You, you can, can do, do it. it. Yeah. Go. Special concert pants. Ugh. Yeah, how will you go now? Well, your mom does have enough time to sew them. I'm scared to even tell her about it. She said that I had to stop playing. Hey, I've got it! Here! You think we should fix the rip in his pants with a stapler? Yeah, isn't it a good idea? Oh, I gotta try it out. You do. Like this? Stop! Why? What's wrong? Eh, my nose itches. That's all. Let's go. You're right, Nolik. It works. That is super. Yeah, the stapler's really great. Do you guys know how it works? Just keep stapling and I'll tell you. The staples for a stapler are lightly glued together. That way you can load many staples at once instead of one at a time and a spring pushes the staples to the front. When you push down on the arm, a metal tooth pushes the front staple down through a thin space, and the staple punches holes in the paper. Next, the pointy ends of the staple push down onto a plate, and that makes the staple bend behind the paper. And there you go, the papers are fastened. So you can 
say that we're sewing, but using a stapler instead of a needle. Yeah, and it works even faster. Huh? What's going on? Could it have run out of staples? There's still a lot more staples, but one of them got jammed here in the slot. Ugh. Tom Thomas, we're leaving in five minutes. Okay, Mom. So, did you get it? No. <sighs> Why don't we get Papa's to help us? Because he's really strong and he's got a pack-a-mat. We can do this ourselves. Tom Thomas, find something we can use to push that staple out. The stapler is not a very new invention. It's been said that the French king, King Louis XV, had a stapler made out of gold and precious gems. Unfortunately, it could only hold one staple at a time. Modern staplers are much more convenient, and people have come up with so many kinds for paper, for plywood, and even for skin. Yes, surgeons often use them during operations. Then there's the staple gun that's used to upholster furniture. And its older brother, the nail gun, can even be used to hold together the walls of a building. And here's an invention almost as important as a stapler. It's the staple remover. With its help, it's possible to remove the staples put in by a stapler. How about the screwdriver? That'll work. Look, the screwdriver fits perfectly into the slot. Ah, that's great. Now push that staple through. Only keep your fingers out of the way, or you won't finish sewing. Tadish! It's still not Tadish. You haven't fixed your pants yet. That's it. They're done. Now we can say, Tadish! Tom Thomas, are you ready? Of course. My idea with the stapler was smart, wasn't it? And Tom Thomas's mother won't notice a thing. Will too. Just wait till she washes them. They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The baby monitor. Oh, it's my old baby monitor. On. Check, check, checking. One, two, three, checking. It's working. Hmm. Why don't we give it to the Johnsons? They just had a baby the other day. Oh, uh, this is mine, and I'm planning on using it. Aren't you a little too big for it? No, I'm not big at all. Well, I didn't realize that you're still a little boy. And a greedy one at that. They're never gonna notice this. Hey, Fixies, are you here? We're here now. Why did you call us? I gotta show you how I turned into a mind reader. I find that just a little hard to believe. Okay, then I'll show you. I'll leave you alone, and then you'll hide this button wherever you want. Then I'll come back and find it. <laughs> you got it. So where's a good hiding place? Well, we gotta think of one. Uh, right here, under the keyboard. Great. Go on, Nolik. Come on in. We're ready for you. And now, I'm going to read your thoughts. Here I go. Hmm. You hit the button here. Look. Ta-da! He really does read minds. Oh, that was a lucky guess. Bet you can't do it again. Well, I bet you I can. We're gonna have to be sneakier. Verda, she's the most beautiful girl in our class. She knows it, too, and doesn't hesitate to use it. 
she can even be a bit sneaky. Like when she needs help with her homework, then Digit suddenly becomes her best friend. But if she doesn't want to carry her pack a mat, she'll say, Fire, please help me. You're just such a strong fixie. But all us boys like her just the same. Digit does, and Nolik does, and I guess I do too. Although, I really like Simka more. Or maybe Verda. Or both of them. I haven't decided yet. Verda can be difficult, and even bossy sometimes. But one thing I know for sure, Verda's a good friend. A friend that'll always come help. Well, that is if she's able to pry herself away from the mirror. I think that we should throw it down into this pencil cup. But then we concentrate on another place. Hmm, that is good, but it won't work, Fixies. Come on in! Uh-huh. <laughs> hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. It's in here. Tirish? Simka, were you thinking about the cup? No, I swear. And my mind was blank. Then who did, huh? Who? Uh-huh. Tom Thomas, what do you say we go again? As many times as you want. I know how he's been doing all of this. It's a baby monitor. That's how he can hear what we're saying. I don't get it. A baby monitor helps parents watch over their babies. The system has two units that look like wireless telephones. The parents keep one of the units by their side and put the other one in the room where the baby is sleeping. If the baby suddenly wakes up and starts crying, the unit in the baby's room will pick up the sound and send it by radio waves to the parents' unit. Mom or Dad will hear the crying and go and comfort their child. And so he's listening to us now. This time I know what we should do. We'll hide it under the globe. Uh-huh. Aha! Huh? Where is it? If you read our minds, you'd find your button under the baby monitor. You tricked me. That's really not nice. And spying on us is nice, you think? I'm sorry, I just thought it'd be fun. Well, anyhow, Tom Thomas, you're too old for this thing. Unless, of course, you still need it. I'm not a baby. I was just, you know, checking it. I'll go and give it to Mom. Mom, I'm not greedy. About what? Let's give this monitor to the Johnsons. And this car is for their baby boy. Hmm, I don't think that baby's big enough yet for your car. So what? Soon he's gonna get bigger and become a big boy, right? Like me. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The fire extinguisher. So, who can tell me? home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chuzaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle sir. Tree. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, Fire. I won't do it for you. Ugh. Fire! Ha! Huh? Huh? Ha! You again! I was joking. 
It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Where are you? And that's how a pack -a mat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop fire. I'm not joking this time. Please believe me, it's there. Hmm. Nice try, fire. Oh, look, he even used smoke this time. No, Simka, that smoke's from a fire. Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth. I swear I'm not lying. This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here. Tula, Simka, turn off the soldering iron. Uh-huh. Got it. Be careful, kids. You have to stay back here away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher. <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin, and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right. Where's the fire? Ah. Oh. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! We put out the fire! You fixies are just the greatest. Thank you. You saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> Not at all, colleague. If not for you, Fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs> Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They have three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. The camera. <laughs> Stop right there and let me see how pretty you look today. Well, just don't tell that to the elevator. Bye bye. Check it out, Nolik. Class, huh? You're not 
gonna get in trouble for doing that? Uh, no. My dad gave me permission to take a few pictures with this camera. No, I mean the picture. You're sure that your mom and dad will like that you took it without asking for permission? But look, what a good picture. You know what, Tom Thomas? You're like a regular paparazzi or something. Paparazzi? They're the ones that take one photo and get millions, aren't they? You're right. And don't care about anyone except their photo apparatus. <sighs> Did you ever wonder how a photo camera works? Let's say you want to take a picture of nature. The light that's outside goes into the camera's lens. That's the glass eye on the front of the camera. The lens takes the light from the scene outside the camera and turns it into a tiny picture that's inside the camera. Then the picture is recorded onto a special electronic sensor called a matrix that's sensitive to light. Click, and there's your photo. What a great idea! Now I know! I'm going to be a paparazzi. Hey, what about your promise? What promise? To never take a picture of us. We're a secret. Stop. Hey, relax. I'll delete them all later. Tom Thomas, stop this right now. I won't until I get a photo of you. No, look, let's run. You can't run from me. Century, the monster and its prey. Tom Thomas! Help! No, he won't help, because he's a paparazzi. Yes, I got it. That's my best photo yet. <gasps> What's all this noise about? Awesome shot. The first cameras were invented almost 200 years ago. But they worked very slowly. If you wanted to have your portrait taken, you'd have to sit still for a whole hour. After film was invented, cameras got much faster, and it became possible to take about 10 pictures a minute. On a piece of film, everything appears to be backwards. Black parts of the picture are white, and the white is black. It doesn't look normal until the picture is transferred from the film to a piece of photographic paper. Now people shoot pictures with digital cameras that work without any film at all. You can look at what you shot instantly on a screen to see if you like it. And if you don't like it, you can try shooting another one. And today, you don't even need a separate camera to take pictures. Almost every mobile phone has one. Simka Nolik, are you in there? Hey, come out. I'll stop shooting photos of you. Aren't we friends? I'm sorry, guys. Well, your friends were almost eaten alive by a dog. Please forgive me. Want to look at the photos I took? <laughs> sure, go on, show us what you got. We're not in that shot. We're not there either. <laughs> well done there, paparazzi. Hang on a sec. I still got another one and you're in it. I know for sure. Look! I'm zooming in. It's impossible. I don't believe it. It's possible. But when did you have time to turn into screws? The same time you were pushing the button. When we're scared, we can change faster than the blink of an eye. You lost. <laughs> paparazzi. And what are you going to do with your millions, Mr. Paparazzi? Uh, would you please stop calling me that? You got it. After every one of those photos is thrown away. All right, I'll delete them. And do I have to delete this one, too? No, keep it. It's a great shot. <gasps> I never even saw you take it. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a pixie 
picture, please don't let the secret out. But if you need a picture, please don't let the secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let the secret out. The talking doll. Mama. Well then, now you know what you need to do to fix it. <laughs> Professor. Professor. Our lesson is over. I'm sorry to be a bother. No problem, Professor Eugenius. Our lesson's over. I've got an urgent matter. You see? Mama, going in that. You've got Mama, yourself a talking doll. Yes, only she speaks Japanese. The problem is I've been asked to get her to talk in English. We can teach her. It's a new technology. I'm puzzled. Don't you worry. We'll figure it out, Professor. Thank you, my colleague. You're always there when I need it. What would I do without you? Professor, can you tell us how toys talk? Not now, children. We'll learn about the doll tomorrow. Now it's time to go home. I already know everything about that doll. You do? Changing her voice is so easy that anyone can do it. How? Here, come, I'll show you. Early talking dolls used to work with a noisemaker inside. When the doll was turned over, air inside the noisemaker got pushed through a squeaker at the end of it, making a noise that sounded like the word mama. Mama. <laughs> Funny. Today, the noises are recorded onto an electronic chip that's part of a little player inside of the doll. Just press a button and the sounds start playing. So now dolls can say much more than just mommy or daddy. They can say anything at all. Well, here's the chip. This is where the recording of the doll's voice is. That's awesome. Can you re-record the voice on there? Well, yeah. Okay, I gotta go. Uh, uh. See ya. Wait, Nolik, I thought of a really funny joke to pull. What if we slip them and then we do and do something? Uh-huh. Well, now, as I promised yesterday, I'm going to tell you all about talking dolls. Some start talking when you rock them, while others react to noise. And for this little lady, you need to press a button to get her to talk. Who wants to? Tula. Me? Well, okay, I can do it. Go ahead. And you'll hear her say, hi there, mama. <laughs> but in Japanese for now. Tula! <laughs> Tula? Is that Japanese for hi there? Tula! Why are you hiding a picture of Digit in your pocket man? <laughs> How could she ever know that? Maybe you're in love? That doll is alive! They call that joking. I just thought of a better joke that we can play. Yeah. What? <laughs> Tula, don't cry. She's not alive. She is alive. I'll tell you who did this horrible thing. It was Fire and Nolan. Huh? It's true, but now the joke will be on them. How? How? The smartest fixie in our class is Digit. Sometimes I think that he knows everything about everything. Professor Grandpus has a lot of respect for him. Digit's always in thought whenever you see him, and he doesn't like when anyone distracts him. He just has no time for fooling around with the other boys. Digit prefers to solve problems using his brains and not his muscles. That's why he can have a tough time in gym class. But he's so sweet that it makes you want to help him. To tell you the truth, Digit isn't always great fixing things with his own hands. But no one understands technology better than he does. If something breaks, Digit can always figure out exactly what's wrong with it and the very best way to fix it. We're gonna make it even funnier this time. Uh-huh. You came back? What? You Must troublemakers. Now I'll show you what happens to bad boys who hurt girls' feelings. Oh, 
You got scared. <laughs> <laughs> Who's crying now, huh? They probably thought that the doll came to life. You know what, Digit? I just started thinking that it, it might be better if she were alive. You know, Tula, you sure are hard to please. <laughs> <laughs> your bare hands. Uh-huh. There's no way. But with the help of the proper tools, it's a piece of cake. But of course, that's only if you know how to use them. Tools need proper care. If the head of a hammer is loose or a drill is dull, then you shouldn't work with them. It's dangerous. And when you're done working, put the tools back in their places. Or you'll be tearing your house apart trying to find them the next time you need them. Huh. The pincers go here, and the wrench goes over there. This drill bit's too long for this spot. Let's see if it fits in this one. Huh, any idea what this tool is for? For splitting wood or carving stone that chisels what you want to own. <laughs> wow, Simka, you're a real poet. <laughs> now try to answer this little poem. When you have a thing to measure, this round tool is quite a treasure. This tool, right? I know what it's called. It's a measuring tape. Let me measure you, Nolik. Wow, you've grown. You've almost reached one centimeter. Class! I also have a rhyming riddle for you. What bangs a nail into the wall to make sure pictures never fall? A, a hammer. hammer! I was first, and the hammer goes right here. And now I have one for you to guess. If you need to screw in screws, here's the tool that you should use. A, a screwdriver. screwdriver! I was first, again. You got it right. All right, Tom Thomas, we better hurry. We still have a lot of tools here to get sorted out. Humans, just like Fixies, use hundreds of different tools to do their work. Picking the right one depends on the task at hand. For instance, if you need to hammer in a nail, use a hammer. But you don't use a hammer for a screw. For that, there is a special tool called a screwdriver. A wrench is the tool for tightening nuts and bolts. A vise is used to hold a part in place. And a drill to drill a hole. If you need to cut a piece of wood, you should choose a saw. You could use a handsaw, for example, or a hacksaw. Different kinds of pliers can be used for snipping, gripping, or bending. If you need to smooth something down, you use a file. If you learn how to work with tools properly, you can build just about anything. <sighs> Looks like we did it, just in time. Oh, and how about this? Do you know what kind of tool that is? I don't know. There's no place for it in here. Just throw it out. Come on, and what if my parents use it? Looks like we did something wrong here. <gasps> my dad came home. Tom Thomas! I'm in here. Hi there. Reading. Way to go, son. Huh? Oh, oh. I don't get it. Where is it? What? I put a piece of metal under the table leg so it wouldn't shake, but it disappeared. So that's where the tool's place is. <laughs> Did you take it? What? I didn't. It must be somewhere under the table. <sighs> and you look under the sofa. Uh, all right. What do you think he 
wants. He wants us to get that metal thing out of his dad's box. Come on, let's go. You got it. Any luck? Uh-uh. Ah, uh, me neither. I found it, Dad. It was under the table, just like I told you. Huh, you were right. It's strange, how could I have missed it? Maybe you're just, uh, tired from working too much. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Tadish. <clears throat> what? Uh, it's a new word, Tadish. Tadish? Hmm. I do like the sound of it. Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They hold three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The microwave. <gasps> okay, children, for today's lesson, we're going to learn about the microwave oven. It's a very special appliance that people use to heat all sorts of different foods up. Oh, wow. Is there any chance that we could get heated up here? You'll find out about that, too, if you'll pay attention, of course. Whoa! Got it? Now listen carefully. I'm listening. I'm listening. Of course, young fixies go to school just like human kids. But their parents teach them a lot of important lessons, too. Fixie parents take their kids on tours of all sorts of different devices and teach them what fixies can do to keep them working properly. They like to show them how the computers or televisions or gaming systems work, or any one of the many appliances they take care of inside of the kitchen, like the stove. Every once in a while, a new device appears in the house, something that the fixies have never dealt with before. To learn how this new thing works, the fixies gather together and read the instructions that the humans keep printing up, but almost never seem to take the time to read for themselves. And so now it's time to look at the magnetron. That's what emits the microwaves. Oh, and so the food absorbs the microwaves, and that's what heats it up. That's right. And now, look carefully to your left. What do you say? Want to watch cartoons? I can't. I need to do my homework. Then just do it quickly. For some reason, whenever I start doing homework, I always get hungry for some food. Then just eat faster. No. The faster I eat, the sooner I'll have to start doing my homework. Mmm, it already got cold. I need to go warm it up. One minute should be enough. These aren't just ordinary wires. These are for... Oh! Oh! Masya, what's going on? It looks like it might be an overload. The microwave might burn out. Then we better run out of here. What do you mean, run? We need... Microwave! 
Tiddish. Oh, what's wrong with the microwave? It looks like it just broke. Who cares if it broke? What matters is that Simka and Masya aren't broken. Look, there's no one here. <coughs> of course not. We were <coughs> behind the wall. You wouldn't believe what happened in there. Oh. oh, there you go. Tom Thomas, why did you put that fork into the microwave? Why not? You mean I'm not allowed? Remember, never put any metal objects into a microwave. If you put forks or spoons in a microwave, you can burn it out. And then not even a fixie will be able to fix it. Even a thin metal border on a plate can cause serious problems. Also, never warm up food in sealed packages or bottles inside a microwave. And one last thing, don't even think of cooking eggs in their shells in there. They'll just explode. Sorry, I didn't know any of that. No, Lick, and what were you thinking? Why didn't you warn Tom Thomas about this, hmm? Oh, I, uh... Oh, today you skipped school. And now you don't know it either. No, Lick, where are you going? I'm talking to you. Oh, where else? I gotta go study all about microwaves. And I'll go do my homework now. But first you'll sit down and eat for a while, right? No, I'm not going to eat food. First, I'll go and play some games for an hour or so. Can you believe that fixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. The keyboard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready or not, here we come. And where is he hiding this time? Tom Thomas! Yoo-hoo! Tom Thomas, you didn't forget about your grandma's birthday, did you? No. Oops, I did. We found you this time. Hey, that's not fair. It was my mom that found me, not you. Then go and hide again. Not now. I have to draw a birthday card for... Oh! My grandmother. So, we need one clean sheet of paper. When's your grandma's birthday? Tomorrow. But your card won't get there on time. Oh, then what can I do? Come on and use your noggin. Pick up the phone and give her a ring. Your grandmother will be really happy to hear your voice. No, we've got a tradition. We send each other birthday cards. And what's the internet for? Why don't you send off an electronic card to her? Simka, that's genius. Oh, this one's cool. Now go ahead and type your message. The letter D isn't working. How can I write Dear Grandma without D? Just let her be a plain old grandma without the dear. But the letter G isn't working either. It looks like we could use a pack -a mat here. A pack -a mat What for? To clean off the keyboard's contacts that got all dirty. What contacts? A key on a computer keyboard works pretty much the same way as a doorbell does. When we press on the button of a doorbell, the contacts inside touch, which lets the electricity flow that makes the bells ring. And when we press a letter on a computer keyboard, an electrical current runs from the keyboard to the computer, and that letter appears on the screen. But if there's dirt between the contacts that stops them from touching, then the current can't flow. Drinking. And so, you shared it with the keyboard? Here's the reason why it's not working. Where did so many crumbs come 
from? Uh, they fell off my sandwich. <laughs> Down here. That must be the sauce for my mushroom pizza. Oh, no, Lick. Well, now it looks like we're going to be out picking mushrooms. <laughs> the Fixies are always ready to help people out. But there are some people we really don't feel like helping. I remember when I was working as a Fixie back in one house. It was a disaster. One day, the owner spilled coffee on the remote for the TV. As I was running to clean the remote, he starts pounding the TV with his fist because the channels won't change. So now the TV is broken, too. Well, with no TV, he decides to listen to some music, and he carelessly pulls the music center onto the floor. So he tries to fix that himself and manages to break it for good. And then he sits down on top of his telephone and breaks that to bits. Meanwhile, I'm still busy trying to clean the coffee off of the remote. There wasn't a minute of rest with this guy around. In the end, I couldn't take it any longer. So I got out of there, and now I'm here, teaching kids. Tom Thomas, why are you eating food at your computer? Yeah, they don't feed you in the kitchen or something? <sighs> now I know it. It's not allowed. You said it. Now write your message, and write the address on there, too. Uh-huh. Mom, do you know what the email address for Grandma is? Grandma doesn't have an email address. So what? We went ahead and fixed that keyboard for nothing? I still need it. And my Grandma? I'll give her a ring on the phone. You said you had a tradition of writing each other cards. And what? Grandma will be happy to hear my voice. That's some original idea, huh? <laughs> done. Yeah. Now Santa Claus is gonna come over. He'll say, one, two, three. Lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. Okay, so let's practice. One, one two, two, three. three. Lights, Lights light up the tree. Huh? Oh, the string light's burned out. And we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No, not quite yet. Oh no, oh no. What are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way, it's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus, Masia, Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? The bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So, do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. 
We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So, let's find the bad bulb. Okay, Papoose, let's go. Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? It lights fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh. I guess this year won't be magical. Okay, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three. Ow! Papoose, I found one more bulb. Here's the one that's not working. One, one two, two, three. three. Light, light, light up, up the, the tree. tree. Huh, now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree. Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho. Whew, that was really hard. I see you already got it shining. But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. <gasps> Tidish! Tidish! Ah, uh, what a hero. Pull me up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Our spirits light up. Whoa! And on the tree. <laughs> yeah! And on the tree. On Christmas ah, Eve, nice box. The lights burn brighter. Mm -hmm. Every year when no one is expecting, from some place that no one could conceive, appears a little miracle before us. Every year on Christmas Eve, 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 the clock it seems on Christmas Eve is ticking slower. And suddenly, on Christmas Eve, a miracle, on Christmas Eve, no one believes, on Christmas Eve, comes out of nowhere. Every year when no one is expecting, from some place that no one could conceive, yeah. a little miracle before Whoa. us. Every year on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, the clock ticks slower. about the microwave oven. It's a very special appliance that people use to heat all sorts of different foods up. Oh, wow. Is there any chance that we could get heated up here? You'll find out about that too, if you'll pay attention, of course. Whoa! Got it? Now listen carefully. I'm listening, I'm listening. Of course, young fixies go to school just like human kids. But their parents teach them a lot of important lessons, too. Fixie parents take their kids on tours of all sorts of different devices and teach them what Fixies can do to keep them working properly. They like to show them how the computers or televisions or gaming systems work, or any one of the many appliances they take care of inside of the kitchen, like the stove. 
Every once in a while, a new device appears in the house. Something that the Fixies have never dealt with before. To learn how this new thing works, the Fixies gather together and read the instructions that the humans keep printing up, but almost never seem to take the time to read for themselves. And so now it's time to look at the magnetron. That's what emits the microwaves. Oh, and so the food absorbs the microwaves, and that's what heats it up. That's right. And now, look carefully to your left. Hooray! Freedom! Oh, Tom Thomas! What do you say? Want to watch cartoons? I can't. I need to do my homework. Then just do it quickly. For some reason, whenever I start doing homework, I always get hungry for some food. Then just eat faster! No. The faster I eat, the sooner I'll have to start doing my homework. Mmm, it already got cold. I need to go warm it up. One minute should be enough. These aren't just ordinary wires. These are for... Oh! Oh! Masya, what's going on? It looks like it might be an overload. The microwave might burn out. Then we'd better run out of here. What do you mean, run? We need, we need to save this microwave. with the microwave. It looks like it just broke. Who cares if it broke? What matters is that Simka and Masya aren't broken. Look, there's no one here. <coughs> of course not. We were <coughs> behind the wall. You wouldn't believe what happened in there. Oh. oh, there you go. Tom Thomas, why did you put that fork into the microwave? Why not? You mean I'm not allowed? Remember, never put any metal objects into a microwave. If you put forks or spoons in a microwave, you can burn it out. And then not even a fixie will be able to fix it. Even a thin metal border on a plate can cause serious problems. Also, never warm up food in sealed packages or bottles inside a microwave. And one last thing, don't even think of cooking eggs in their shells in there. They'll just explode. Sorry, I didn't know any of that. Nolik, and what were you thinking? Why didn't you warn Tom Thomas about this? Hmm? Oh, I, uh... Oh, today you skipped school. And now you don't know it either. Nolik, where are you going? I'm talking to you. Oh, where else? I gotta go study all about microwaves. And I'll go do my homework now. But first you'll sit down and eat for a while, right? No, I'm not going to eat food. First, I'll go and play some games for an hour or so. They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The baby monitor. Oh! It's my old baby monitor. On. Check, check. Checking. One, two, three. Checking. It's working. Hmm. Why don't we give it to the Johnsons? They just had a baby the other day. Oh, uh, this is mine. And I'm planning on using it. Aren't you a little too big for it? No, I'm not big at all. 
Well, I didn't realize that you're still a little boy. And a greedy one at that. They're never gonna notice this. Hey, Fixies, are you here? We're here now. Why did you call us? I gotta show you how I turned into a mind reader. I find that just a little hard to believe. Okay, then I'll show you. I'll leave you alone, and then you'll hide this button wherever you want. Then I'll come back and find it. <laughs> you got it. So where's a good hiding place? Well, we gotta think of one. Uh, right here, under the keyboard. Great! Go on, Nolik. Come on in. We're ready for you. And now, I'm going to read your thoughts. Here I go. Hmm. You hit the button here. Look. Ta-da! He really does read minds. Oh, that was a lucky guess. Bet you can't do it again. Well, I bet you I can. We're going to have to be sneakier. Verda, she's the most beautiful girl in our class. She knows it, too, and doesn't hesitate to use it. She can even be a bit sneaky. Like when she needs help with her homework, then Digit suddenly becomes her best friend. But if she doesn't want to carry her pack a mat, she'll say, Fire, please help me. You're just such a strong fixie. But all us boys like her just the same. Digit does, and Nolik does, and I guess I do, too. Although, I really like Simka more. Or maybe Verda. Or both of them. I haven't decided yet. Verda can be difficult and even bossy sometimes. But one thing I know for sure, Verda's a good friend. A friend that'll always come help. Well, that is if she's able to pry herself away from the mirror. I think that we should throw it down into this pencil cup. But then we concentrate on another place. Hmm, that is good, but it won't work, Fixies. Come on in. Uh-huh. <laughs> hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. It's in here. Titty? Simka, were you thinking about the cup? No, I swear. And my mind was blank. Then who did, huh? Who? Uh-huh. Tom Thomas, what do you say we go again? As many times as you want. I know how he's been doing all of this. It's a baby monitor. That's how he can hear what we're saying. I don't get it. A baby monitor helps parents watch over their babies. The system has two units that look like wireless telephones. The parents keep one of the units by their side and put the other one in the room where the baby is sleeping. If the baby suddenly wakes up and starts crying, the unit in the baby's room will pick up the sound and send it by radio waves to the parents' unit. Mom or Dad will hear the crying and go and comfort their child. And so he's listening to us now. This time I know what we should do. We'll hide it under the globe. Uh-huh. Aha! Huh? Where is it? If you read our minds, you'd find your button under the baby monitor. You tricked me. That's really not nice. And spying on us is nice, you think? I'm sorry, I just thought it'd be fun. Well, anyhow, Tom Thomas, you're too old for this thing. Unless, of course, you still need it. I'm not a baby. I was just, you know, checking it. I'll go and give it to Mom. Mom, I'm not greedy. About what? Let's give this monitor to the Johnsons. And this car is for their baby boy. Hmm, I don't think that baby's big enough yet for your car. So what? Soon he's gonna get bigger and become a big boy, right? Like me. Can you believe that fixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny, infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please.
cleaning up toys. You're just gonna go take them out again later. You said it! Tom Thomas, if you're done cleaning up, go and eat your lunch! Okay, be there soon. Nolik, you wait for me? Uh-huh! He calls this cleaning up. my mom. She started vacuuming. possible a vacuum cleaner can take all that dust in oh, and none of it gets back out. Oh, come on. It's simple. They taught us about it way back in third grade of Fixie School. <laughs> you can think of a vacuum cleaner as nothing more than a fan with a net. The fan spins backwards, so it sucks in air with dust and dirt. If you put a net in front of the fan, the net will catch everything that is in the air and let the air pass through. Then all you need to do is add a pipe and you've got yourself a vacuum cleaner. But instead of a net, vacuum cleaners use special bags to collect the dust and dirt. It's as simple as that. Oh, whoa, Simka. Uh, no, like, could he get sucked into the vacuum? Oh, no! Did he stay back there? Tom Thomas, what's the matter? Uh, uh, Mom, I can I can I can finish vacuuming you. I'm I mean for you. All right, I'll go clean the dishes. No lick, no lick. small and unnoticeable. But if dust gets inside machines and appliances, it's a disaster just waiting to happen. It can keep gears from turning properly. Dust can make appliances overheat. And if dust gets onto electric contacts, it can create a short circuit that can even cause a fire. That's why we fixies have to constantly clean the insides of appliances from dust, even though a lot of us are allergic to it. He, he, ha, chew! If only people would just dust a little more often than they do right now. Ha, 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 chew! At least people could dust more on the outside. That would make our work so much easier. And their equipment would break a whole lot less often. Well, did you find him? No! It's all my fault. My mom asked me to clean up my toys, and I didn't just do it like she asked. Now it sucked him in because of me. Nolik! Nolik! So what do you say, Tom Thomas? 
What? I already apologized. And I already promised to clean up my toys. And why are you sneezing? To keep you company. So you'd feel a little better. <laughs> no way to hold on when the globe is turning that fast. But I know I can do it. Hmm. Give me that piece of rope there, would you? <clears throat> now you can't throw me off. Spin it. Go on. Whoa! What you doing? Trying to learn a bit about the Earth's gravity? That's a globe, not the Earth. Well, a globe's a model of the Earth, isn't it? Hey, come on, Simka. The globe looks like a ball, but the Earth is flat. We walk on it. The Earth also looks like a ball. It's just a very, very big one. It's not true. If the Earth is really round like you say, then it would throw people right off of it, like the globe does to me. No, it's just that the Earth pulls everyone towards it. Are you sure? The planet that we live on, the Earth, is a huge sphere. The Earth revolves around the Sun, and the Moon revolves around the Earth. Do you know why they don't fly away from each other? It's because of a force called gravity that pulls all objects towards each other. The heavier the object, the stronger its pull. That's why people, rocks, air, and water get pulled towards the Earth instead of floating up into space. Thanks to gravity, we are able to walk on the Earth. Then why doesn't the globe pull on me like the Earth does? Because this globe is very light. Compared to the Earth, this globe is like millions of billions of times lighter. Compared to the Earth, we're specks of dust. He's right. Look, a speck of dust. It sticks to the globe like we stick to the Earth. Oh, come on. It's just because no one's turning it. But the Earth's spinning and we stick to it. What? I just don't believe you. There's just no way the Earth is spinning. You've really got no idea how the days all turn into the nights, do you? Do too. It's because the sun goes up and then sets. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Our sun's here and you're over there. On Earth. Is it dark, Nolik? It's dark. Then it's nighttime on your side. And here, it's day. All right. Now we'll turn the Earth. Hooray! Now it's daytime for me, and night for me over here. Ah, oh, my side got dark again. And for me, it's a new day. All right, fine. You guys were right. I believe you. The Earth is spinning. <laughs> the Earth goes round and round like a tilted spinning top. And as it spins, the sun shines its light on whichever half of the Earth is facing it. And as the Earth makes one full turn, we watch how the night becomes day and the day becomes night again. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to make one full turn. But that's not all. The Earth is also traveling in space around the sun. It takes the Earth one year to make a full circle. As it goes along its way, the top and bottom of the Earth take turns being closer to the sun. That's because the Earth is tilted. When the top half is closer to the sun, it's summer there. While at the very same time on the bottom half, it is winter. And when it is winter on the top half, it is summer on the bottom. Nolik. Nolik, where are you? I'm not sure. 
somewhere in Kazakhstan. The force of gravity is super strong around here. So go on, spin it. You're gonna fall off, Nolik. Don't worry, just do it. Go ahead and tilt it if you feel like it. Told ya! Ha! And you were sure I was gonna fall off this globe. That's strange. Nolik, come on over here. What for? You'll see in a second. I don't want to. You really don't want or you can't. Tom Thomas, take a look. <laughs> I get it. He stuck himself to the globe, didn't he? Yeah, with the chewing gum. Isn't it time to go? Uh-huh. And me! Well, what about me? Hey! Ah! Uh, you gotta help me. Don't leave me. Should we help him? It, but the pull of chewing gum is even stronger than the Earth's gravity. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. 